Hey everyone, welcome to the final lesson in the Rito 101 Ride API Exploration Workshop. Uh, this is the whole class we've done for in our semester. Um, sorry for delays on certain weeks, but realistically, like I do have somewhat of a social life, so kind of happens sometimes. Um, but I'm pretty happy with what we've been able to do, and I really think that we'll have a great time um, doing so within the future. Now, what we're going to do today is learn how to start building out a script to automate all the things that we've done the past couple of weeks. Okay, um, We're going to have a recap on our last lesson where you're going to look at how to build API functions. And then once we do that, we can start building out a script on collecting all these different functions that automate the work that we want to do and that will help us save a lot of time when we want to um, when, we, when we want to run a lot of the data points or the match history lesson uh, links that we want to use right all these different things come in play and we want to be able to automate that as much as possible but that is also really time consuming because you're building out an entire script and I will not give you my script because I also worked a really long time on that and I don't really think that's the best thing for uh, us to do. But what I do think is the best thing for us to do is ideas such as using a wrapper which can help automate what we want to do. Hey, hi baby. I'm not opening the door, I'm sorry. Um, so. With that said, let's talk about what we did last week, right? Last week, uh, we introduced ourselves to D Dragon, right? Data, Data Dragon is the. Uh, oh, what? Okay, fine, you can come up. <laughs> this little nugget. Okay. She's been she's been ignoring me. This one, this little, this little thing over here. This little nugget. Alright, I'll bring it back here. Alright, so basically, we learned that it contains all the constants of runes and masteries and all these different things um, that are really important for us to uh, learn and understand in order to utilize um, certain pieces of information that we wanted. Okay certain things that we wanted to use within um, the right match history links that came up, right? And it's 10.1.1. Yeah. All right, so yeah, so to do that and then uh, parse that. So when we parse that, we learned how to create for loops, which is the for i in uh, X right for the I in X list or X dictionary uh, how do you parse that and get that into a specific piece of information that you want right um, now what are you doing you can go ah. All right, <laughs> putting the information into the data frame itself, importing that data frame into your local system, and then, um, and then, in addition to that, uh, in addition to that, we also want to import a data frame into our local system. Now. One of the things that we did is API function building, right? Uh, well, that we were, that we're trying to do. Um, what we want to do is understand how we can build a function in itself, so that we can utilize uh, the APIs in an automated fashion, right? We have one uh, name, two names, three names, four names. You don't want to input them every single time. So what we do is we create this function. Now, a function is really built like this, okay? It's built with function, space, the function name. It can be whatever variable you want. It literally doesn't matter. Your first key, 
your second key, your third key, and then like all the way till whichever key it ends at. So it could be key 300, it could be key one, and that's it. Um, and all these keys has a feed into the function here. Okay, so whatever you are building will replace, you know, like if I write function goes here, key one, right? So that means that whatever this is will be placed here when it runs. Okay, so if I do key three, key two, that means that key three will go here, key two will go here, right? Like it, it, it's all the same. Like if I like put it this way, right? This is blue, this is blue. This is this color. This is the same color, All right? Like, I'll just copy paste. Literally, it would be copying and pasting it, right? Like, all these would be of the same level, right? Like, these would be like that. Does that make sense, guys? This is how you build a function. For those that don't know, this is like the way that you would build it. And I'll show you like an image in a second that, um, and that would explain a little bit more. Um, now, in addition to this, uh, what else? Um, in addition to this, I would say that you want to take these oh yeah i would want to just move to the next one all right api function building right before we go into how to build the function a little deeper let's look at what we want to build so so basically what would happen is that for our purposes we want to pull a couple of things right if you want to assess let's say we'll take the uh, ten Ashentes like case right he's working for a team in portugal and he's playing against all these other portuguese teams and all these portuguese players well, let's say there's a hundred players in the portuguese league you know i don't even know if there's 100 people in portugal but let's assume right so what do you need to do so what do you need you need number one you need match uh the summer names so like summer info that means account ids and especially right now the encrypted ids match lists in order to get match ids match details match timelines and whatever other apis you want to use all those come into this so if you want to check how much lp people have then you, that would be part of this uh api function that you would build right and each api function has one api uh url to it so summer info would be its own function match list would be its own function and the reason why is because it becomes a lot simpler when you want to build it out right you don't want it to be eight different things in within one you would rather just build it out separately and that one feeds into the other feeds into the other that way if something breaks you can fix it in its own and then figure out how to move forward instead of having to rebuild the entire thing over again Okay. This thing. It's broken. Comment through in all of these, you need the following. So within all of these, right, you need a couple of things. You need an API key, a region, so like North America, US, South uh, Korea, which is like I just think KR one or KR, US one, UN one, uh, NA one, like all these different like regions, right? And a key and I, or an ID of some sort. So that means it would be the summoner name or the match ID or the match list, which would come from the summoner name or here, which would be the match ID in order to get the match details. Match timeline would also need the match ID. Like all these different things would require these three basics, an API key, a region, and a key ID of some sort. Maple, you can't go outside yet. They're still working. You got a bigger puppet in your bed? I don't like it. Alright, here you go. Put on this. I can't help you right now. Ugh, the house is a mess. Alright, so API function building, right? We learned the syntax of the function itself, but 
what would be the the meat of it right what would be in that middle right we were looking at what goes here in the last slide right what goes in these but what goes here right and you would think it's the api url right it would look like this right you would want to have the region you would want to have the summary name and you want to have the api key right you don't obviously you don't need the pluses yeah what's up i can't bring you outside i love her but i have to be mean father today um so this is exactly what you'd want you want the region summer name api key right now you need to replace these right in order to replace these you would need to feed it in somehow which is why we're going to build the function out right we're going to build this going here right which goes here Baby, she's whining. I can't. <laughs> My heart. And then you see like region, right? So this is like match details, right? But if we want to do summary name, it would be literally this. Go in here. Right? Does that make sense? And we can name it uh, yeah, summoner details. Right, it would, it would look like this, but something's off, right? You have the API key, right? And you have the region, and you have the summoner name, right? As we put it here. I'm sorry, you can't, you can't go outside right now. You can't, you're not allowed. Ugh, oh, she's gonna think I'm evil. Uh, anyways, um, this won't work. So how do we fix it, right? How do how do we feed this? Because if you put this in your pantheon, if you put this in your in your uh, Jupyter notebook, all it's gonna do is be like, okay, this doesn't make sense. Like, guys, it, it won't it won't work. So let me sh let me just see if I can just try it out. So yeah, this is how it would look, right? It would look like the following. Right, it would look like API key region summer name. First of all, we needed to find this. We needed to find this. We needed to find this. In addition to that, how do we run this? Because this, like, if you do this, it's not gonna work out, right? It, it doesn't make sense because nothing here is truly built out, right? Like, it's just not. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna learn how to put this, this into an actual call for the api right like this has to go into your right here remember like into your console or into your uh Jupyter notebook thread maybe you give me the puppy dog eyes i can't do it i can't do it come up here come up here oh <laughs> i'm sorry guys she's really really living today do I have any of my treats here? Ugh. All right. Poor puppy. Anyways, what we want to do is build out the API call, right? In order to build out the API call, I made it really simple, but the idea is as such. Remember how we had the requests feature? So this is exactly the same. Just instead of using requests, we're using the URL fetch, which is literally just going to take the response which is the same thing as when we do the request response and parse it this way. You're using the fetch. It's gonna take the URL that we want, right? You see how it's URL here and URL here, as we said before, that's how functions work, right? You do far response, this is this, all the way here, and then you run this, okay? That's literally the function. Don't worry, baby, don't worry. Now, it will utilize the URL you created. Let's feed that into an API that we created before, and we would write function summoner info right here. 
we would write function summoner info API key region summoner name right and then we do the var URL var meaning variable right variable here is the response variable here is response body you see how it says response so it's gonna be your response get content text which is just gonna be the JSON itself and you're gonna jump what are you gonna do I'm gonna go on my bed one second I'm gonna put it on my bed Right. <laughs> now, this is going to create the function that you want, right? You have var URL equals this, which is going to take API key and replace the API key here. Region, which is going to compare the region. I'm going to come back up. I'm going to come back up. All right, region, API key, and summer name, right? And it's gonna replace it. Let's say you do G2 space caps. What? Wanna come up? Come. Uh. <laughs> I don't know what she wants. This little nugget, I love you so much. Now she's jumping down, but she just has to come up. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I really don't know. Return API call. So, <sighs> all right, give me a moment. <sighs> okay. Sorry, I'm just like losing it a little bit. Um, like, because I feel really bad. So, what you're doing here, you're taking the function of summoner info, right? You have your three keys API key, region, summoner name, right? You create the first variable, which is the URL, which would feed into the API call function here, right? My heart, man. My heart. I can't. I'm going to lose it. <laughs> um, uh, basically, the region, the summer name, and API key is always going to be replaced. Then the URL is going to be built. The URL gets sent to the API call function, right? So you have the, both these functions running. And then it would run it here, give you a response. And then this response will be returned here because you're calling this function here. See how it's API uppercase C A L L. And then same thing here. So you're going to create this URL. When it says return API call parentheses URL, it's going to take this URL that you just created and run it through this. So it's as if this was inside here. Okay. All right. Now, one thing that is important is some things don't change, right? Your API key doesn't change and your region probably won't change, right? If you're doing like a bunch of the same region. So what happens is we want to set constants. Just like we set a constant where API call of a function is equal to this, even though it's dynamic, it's still constant as in that format and that string itself, is the same thing here. When you create, you know, like if I say the following, right? If I say that ABC is equal to 100, that means that ABC here is 100. This is something that we covered off in the basic way. It, all in the first lesson, I'm pretty sure. But the idea is really simple, right? Certain tag, right? This is not 100, right? And then you make it, you know, 1100, 1000, whatever. And you say this. And then you say minus ABC. And it'll subtract. And you keep doing that, right? It's the same thing. If you write just ABC. It's just still 100, right? So like all these things are constant. So your API key would be a constant. You would put it in once, and then it will feed into the function until you replace the API key. 
So once you run it within that like thread, the definition of API key is going to be your API key that you put in. Okay. Now you want to copy this format for all API calls that you want to use and you can scale this. So I'm going to show you what I have, right? And you can like slow this down as much as you want. Basically, this is my API function page and this is all my code right and all this code is building functions running json all that stuff and that makes me be able to run entire sheets on their own okay now that takes a while to build right like there's so many different functions so many different names so much different syntax and it'll take you like a good week to build right but let's say you don't want to spend the week in just building the script because you have a lot of work to do what can we do we can do the following we can use a wrapper a lot of people use wrappers such as uh riot cassiopeia uh riot pantheon um by it shadow let me see what's what's list riot api wrappers right so it's like literally camille riot sharp golio like all these are different coding languages python has uh, Pantheon, Riot Watcher, Cassiopeia, and I think that's it. Yeah, I like using Pantheon the most. Most people use Riot Watcher and Cassiopeia, as you can see, with the 269 stars, 240 stars. But I like using Pantheon for other reasons. Cassiopeia is actually like pretty good. Like you can do the following, right? You would import it just like you do as you have, you know, import requests. So same thing here, right? You would do summoner equals this, champions equal this. And what do, what do all these functions do? These functions exist to help you query whatever you want. Okay? Baby, I'll take you out in five minutes. Okay? Five minutes. My heart, man. Like you, said, like you can follow all these different things and set it up and everything. And that's great, but... I don't like it because it takes a long fucking time, like a really long time. Whereas with this, it's, like, <laughs> it's, it's so fast, like literally all you have to do is install Pantheon, like download the Pantheon, right? Or, or install it this way, pip install Pantheon or pip3, download it and run via the setup. Like it's one of these two that you want to do. And then literally you start here. You copy paste like these. You put it in your in your terminal, and you start running it. And it's that simple, right? It's so simple to start, right? So like, let's let's do this, right? I'm gonna. Nah, I don't want it. I need to paste my. So I'm gonna do something in a second. So let me do. What is it? API key. API underscore key equals and this is where you guys don't see it copy paste back here wonderful all right so we have all this information right we have from pantheon import pantheon import async io this you don't need to understand this is literally just turning on like imagine turning on the program of pantheon even though it's its own program that's what you want to do then you're defining the request log you're doing this, you're doing that. All this is different functions. So 
this is async, so it's a way to build functions. You're defining get summoner ID from name, and it'll try this, and if it doesn't work, it'll give you an exception. And same thing here, try this, give you an exception. Try this, give you an exception, right? So let's import all these, right? Uh, baby, you're so scared, I'm sorry. All right, so you want to let's let's see then how do we run some of these, right? So, what do we want to set for get summoner ID, right? Get summoner ID puts in name. Right? So, we want to we want to set that constant. So, let's say name equals g2 caps. Right? Makes sense. Let's take this do that. And I'll say go coroutine, right? Because we're not actually parsing what's inside. Coroutine, so that means there's, uh, like it needs to be ran properly. How do we run it properly? Async IO is async is a, the async IO event loop. So how do we do it? We do loop run until complete. Take it in 10 minutes. I'm gonna have to run through this like a lot faster. Alright. I'm gonna get back down. Alright. So, this is the actual running of what we wanted, right? But this doesn't really give us exactly what we need. We wanna see, we wanna see information such as like. What's the summer name? What's the account ID? How do we know if it really worked, right? So let's let's go back and put it inside the proper manner, right? Which is Pantheon. Let's print the summer ID, right? And you can even make it a little clearer. And say seminar ID equals and then comma and then you do the same for account ID and it runs so quickly so easily right and now let's take this account ID that we just created right we we wanted to run this let's get the recent matches we want to run this. How do we do it? And it'll run. It'll give us all the recent matches of this guy. Oh no, because there's no API code. But it's gonna mask it. Yeah. But we can just say like uh, matches three. EU West one player not found. It's not a player. You poor thing. I can't. Why isn't it working now? Isn't that the match ID? Oh. It would be something like that. So for G2 caps, right, it'd be Summoner's Rift normal mode. Let's see. Wait, is this NA? Yeah, I want EU West. Why is it giving me NA? You know what? Let's do it the proper way, proper way. OP.gg, do caps, Europe West. No, Europe West, we're going Europe West. Is that not his thing? 
Or is it G2? Is it G2 caps? What's his ID? There's no way. G2. Whatever. Mickey XD. Let's do it. Let's re let's restart from here. Like this is weird. All right. Let's do it this way. These are all timelines. I mean, these are all recent matches with with timelines, right? Like this is one large timeline for this one, right? And I wonder if it won't let us access, right? Do I have to put my API key in? I don't want to do it. Basically, you're going to want to parse these. How do we parse these? Let's go back to our thing because I'm going to have it in the next slides, I think. What we're going to do is we're going to get a timeline one, right? And we're going to create these timelines that we had. Where is it? No, no, leave. We're going to take these timelines. You see the game ID, map ID, Dominion Victory, Champion ID, all these different things. We're going to take this and we're going to create our own timeline, right? Get match and timeline. This right here. We're going to do that. Wonderful. Now we're going to do this and do it with get match and timeline. So we're replacing that. Yeah. So we're going to replace that. And what else are we going to do? We are going to, I think we need to define one thing. Timeline. I think we can do this right here. We do get match and timeline. Oh, get match and timeline would be with. Let's take one of these IDs that we created. See if this works. Okay, that's fine. What? What do you want, baby? <sighs> this is getting really frustrating. So you would do this, you would run this, and then you would take the timeline that gets created and you would start editing it. How would you start editing it? With what we see here on the next page, which is the game information list, right? Remember how we did a for loop last week? The for game in games data raw, which is what we have here, games data raw. Okay. What we have there, we take that and we want to parse it to create power participant IDs, team IDs, champion IDs, all these different, different views, right? And remember how we had the for loops last time where we had game information. Let me take off this highlight. Let's make it white. Right, so what we want to do, let's say we want to add game information for, you know, let's see what variable we want. We want to get, we want to get which variable, let's say vision score right so we want vision score now so we would do vision score close bracket equals 
and it would be vision score right we would have to define that now what how do we define that we would define let's say get patch get date or get participant ID from account ID get team and champion right so once you have this participant ID it would probably I think it would be like this it would be like participant it would be this and this bracket because the participant ID would be like participant ID tie line or something like that and you would be able to pull in the vision score now I built out something over here which I'll show you right now but this is the main thing for this type of wrapper and the idea is behind this that you can run all these things that you'd want right so remember how we did the form pantheon import pantheon import async io define the request log as we said summoner id match list imagine timeline recent matches in addition to that we're going to take this to g2 caps zero right let's see let's just check if he's last played this account it's like E West save hasn't played on it recently. Just the trickster. Okay, he's played on this today, right? He's played on this literally today. So we're going to find that, right? We're going to do this. We're going to replace it here as well. We're going to get the games that he's just played. This is a summoner ID, this is a can ID, and these are the games that he's playing. Okay? So all of these are the games that he's playing. Timelines, matches, timelines, matches, timelines, matches. Wonderful. Now we want to run these for a bunch of them, right? But let's try to see what we can get from one. So we're gonna run this just to get it updated to just a trickster. Trust a trickster's Summer ID, recent matches, etc., like we did here. And now we're going to run all these different views, right? Get participant from account ID, right? So we're going to do that. We're going to get team and champion. Which champion is he playing? 266, which is Aatrox, right? True is if he won or not. Did he win? Yes, he did. Wonderful. What team is he on? Blue side? He's on blue side. Wonderful. Like, all these different things like come into play here. Like you can see how. From side to side, you can see the differences in information, right? Because you're just pulling the JSON and it's parsing it for you so you can automate it yourself. Get team composition. So 64, 106, 80, 2, and 50. So it's like uh, Mord, Warwick, uh, Syndra, all these different champions. Like, actually, like all these different champions that are updated to whatever they are. So 19, 134, 82, 50, 266. And then this is 164, 60, 246, 235, 111. Like all these different things coming into play, right? Um, and I'm pretty sure it's in order, but I'm not sure. Composition versus append. No, no, no. It's, it's in order of this, but I don't think it matters that much. Cause like sometimes it's not an order from draft perspective. Um, anyways, then you import requests in JSON, right? And you're going to pull in the right patch, which is 10.0.1 champ ID to name. Wait, what broke? Command. Why is the decoding error? Expecting value line one column zero card zero. JSON loads response text. Is it that we're not importing JSON? We did import JSON. Why is this breaking? Let me see. You see, let, let's parse it this way, right? Let's parse what's going on. And then let's do response. Share data. Is that 
Ah, that's what's breaking. Response.txt is breaking. Why? Does this not work? That's exactly why. Maybe it's 10.1.1. Yep, 10.1.1, that's the issue. As we see, you query it properly, it fixes. Wonderful. Player champion, champion ID to name, team composition, all these different things. I can actually share this script itself, and I will share it on the Discord. But let's get the patch, it's 10.1, date time, what's, the, what's today's date? 2020, 0.1.12, that's the day that he's playing this game. And then this, we now have a game information list with all of this information. We literally just queried this in 10 seconds. Like literally, if I just spam this entire thing, like it's literally done in 10 seconds. Let me cut that out. Put this back up here. Actually, no, I'll put it back up here. Cut this out. Literally, from start to finish is. Let's count, right? It's five seconds, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. Like it's just running this. No, it's because we're running it twice. 26, 27, da, 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 it's all the way done. Wonderful, right? So we got all this done, but it's still not pretty like we want it to. And remember what we did last week? What did we do last week? We put it into pan into a panda. What is uh, panda is a data frame? Let's do this. Oh shit. Look at what we did. We literally just took an entire match history, broke down team compositions, dates, champions, patches, whatever, in less than a minute. And this is now a workable script that you can add things to. And this is what you're going to be adding everything you want to, right? So like I'm going to have to like look into the syntax a little bit cuz I actually haven't used this wrapper in forever. But I'm pretty sure it's gonna be like a like vision score, right? As we were saying, it would be like participant ID, vision score. I'm pretty sure this won't work, but let's let's just try it. Vision score is not defined. Yeah, and that's why. All right. So how do we do that? For partner spin done items list I didn't range no. what I want it's not what I want get team chain participant ID get patch I think we need to manipulate like get item list right so for participant game participants if participant is part is that no I don't need this I need like I'm gonna show you how to do this one and then I think we could be good but basically, we want to parse a timeline of exactly what we did, right? So let's see. Let's look at the timestamp and try to find something that we can add. Let's look at. Let's do this. Let's do it this way. Let's go pretty grounds. Let's do this. Games data raw timeline. Remember how we parsed the JSON before? So we're gonna do that. And we're gonna look at, we can look at the frames. There's 60,000 frames, frames, events, participants. Da, 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 da. Let's see if we can find vision score.
Yeah, there's no vision score in the timeline. Let's look at the game's data drop period. Let's do it this way. Game's data raw. Let's see. We want to take, we can take any of this information we want, but let's not do that. Let's look at the following. Participants. All right. So it's going to, let's go into participants, which should be this. Does it work? Yep. It does work. You can go to one through, let's do zero. So this is one of the participants, right? And then he's playing champ ID 19. This is playing champ ID 134, right? So I think if we do this, we should be fine. Game and game is data raw. Participants two. Will it work? List index at a range. Nope. Will this work? Yeah, it would. Wonderful. Let's see. Spell ID. Where is he? So this will tell us what their summer spells are. Spell one ID, spell two ID, right? What? She escaped? Sorry. How'd she get out? No, she get out. Freezes. She doesn't want you to leave. That's what she nips at your feet. So I think this should work. Does it work? All right, rune two. Rune. Participant ID would be here. Will it work? List index at a range. Why? All right, well, this is like the basic idea, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to build a function to pull this. Like, Yeah, I'm gonna have to build a function that's gonna be like get. Yeah, we can do this. And so we understand how to build that. We're gonna do this one last thing and then, cause it's kind of getting messy at this point. So we're gonna do define get skill order, All right? We game participant ID. All right, you want to see how they level up. So you're gonna look at. You're gonna have to create an empty frame, which is gonna be skill order. You're gonna do for frame in game, all right? And then you're gonna to go to the timeline. You're gonna to to frames, all right? For what? For each frame in game, you're gonna look at the event, right? So you're gonna look at what they're doing within any specific timeline within the game. Wonderful. If the event type equals skill. All right, all right, let me just do it this way. It's like skill if it's skill level up, right? If you're looking at this timestamp, you're looking at skill level up, participant ID, skill slot, level up type, right? 
So like there's evolves and stuff, okay? So we're gonna go back up to our function, back down to our function. She's so fast. Yeah, dude, she's like literally, used to, she's using Bolt, like. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna take skill level up and event participant. Participant ID equals participant ID, right? Skill order dot append string. <sighs> what are we appending? We're appending We're appending, so we have skill level up. We want to append. So if the participant ID matches, we want to append the skill slot, right? So we're gonna go. We're gonna append the string. Event. Skill slot. Okay. Wonderful. Then, what do you want? You want to return. Let's say you want to separate it with an arrow, or you want to separate it with like that, something, whatever it is. You're going to do return join skill order. So for in so then you're going to take this, right? You define that, right? It works. Wonderful. So you're going to do skill order equals get skill order games did what honey I'm gonna take you on a walk soon don't worry you want to walk okay we're gonna go on a walk I'm really sorry about this guys now you're back nice games did raw zero and then the participant ID all right, you want to feed in games and participant ID. So you have games that are around, participant ID. Then you want to print out skill order. Those are the spells that you took in the game. Wonderful. And then what you can, you, you can easily do like, like you can easily do like uh, skill order equals, you know, um, no. That equals dot replace one Q right so you do that and you do it again for R is four E is three W Two and bam. Now, if you want to put this inside here, I think this will work. I think if you just do skill order after, really? What if you do this? After if you do that, I don't know. This, I guess, has to go out outside of it, or you could do an if function, but it doesn't really matter. So, once you have this, you can do get skill order and you put it here, right. Game information level ups equals and remember it's game and participant ID and this we're gonna delete again. See? And then we wanna build it into this frame. Bam! Dunzo. See how it's done? 
I'm gonna sh I'm gonna download this and share it. File. Download as a Python notebook. I should have title it. Riot Pantheon wrapper template. Okay. Save it. I'm gonna download it. Keep. I'm gonna take this and put it in here. If I could share it. Well, I'll email it. How about that? Okay. But basically, that that is literally how you how you do it, right? Now you can keep adding things to this, and then you put it into data frames that you want, so it'll look like it'll look like this. Nope. Yeah, it'll look like this, right? You want it to look like this, and the more you add. All you have to do is follow the format that I just did, right? Remember how I built this? So let's say you want to do item order. You would do the same thing. You would do, um, how would you do it? You would want to build for frame and game timeline. And then it would be like, so this is the event, right? So it's skill level up, right? Let's say you want to take item purchased, right? So let's go back here. Let's cop. Let, let's put this down so we can copy it and paste it. Let's plus it here. Item purchased, right? If it is p item purchased, then what do we do? We want to. We want to see what goes here, right? So let's go back down. Right, item purchased. You want the item ID, right? So you take this. You put item ID here. You put a new sheet you're gonna rename it right you're gonna do item item shopping cart okay item shopping cart you do item shopping cart item shopping cart and then get get shopping cart okay and then what are you gonna do you're gonna put item shopping cart here we did define it it's right here What did we do wrong? Return that join item shopping cart. What did I do wrong? Did I misspelling something? Items list. Items bought. Items bought. Items bought. Items bought. Let's just define that. Then. What do we want to do? Oh, I know what we want to do. We forgot to do that. And then we're going to do this. But it was what was defined. We just defined it. We just bought it, defined it here. This is not callable. What did we do wrong? Items bought, frame and item, frame and game, timelines. If this works, that should work. I'm really confused. What am I doing wrong? What did I miss? Physical order, get shopping cart, games, participant ID, frame and game, timeline frames for event and frames, events. Item equals equals item purchased and event ID is participant ID. Items bought that append strength. Oh, I think I know. Event type skill level up and the event type is item purchased. I think that might be I don't understand what did I do wrong what am I doing wrong why is it not callable 
This is callable and this is not. And it's the same function. Oh, I know what I did wrong. That's what happened. Because we did that. This is correct. And then we're going to take items bought and put it here. Oh my god, I'm triggered. <laughs> That's how like tilted I am actually like I'm actually tilted like there's no way No way Um Yeah, so what do we want to do next? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do one last thing one last thing. We're going to do one last thing, okay? And the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to take D Dragon and we're going to define all of these. And I'm going to show you how to automate it. Remember how Remember how we did it last time where I created something for D Dragon earlier for No wait, we already have item list. Wait, what? I just rebuilt this. Oh, these are major items. It doesn't really matter. So item ID to name. We're going to take this and we're going to bring it back down. Okay. Right, so this is what we had. And we want to take the JSON loads, right? Item raw data, JSON loads, response text, item, item ID to name. Item ID to name it's for key item in item raw data, right? Which is the JSON. Like all the items that it has, it's going to take their key and put in the name that exists. So I think we can do this with items bought. I don't even know if we'll have to change anything. Will we? Items list, items list IP, do not an idea name. Okay. So what they did went. What they did, what did they do? Wonderful. We're going to have it, where is it? Here, okay. So within this, what are we going to do? We want to take this and replace it with, I mean, take that, take this, with names. No. What name, right? So we're gonna go back here. We're gonna look at what the what happened. We did item ID to name, and it was append ID item ID to name, right? I guess it's a way you can do it. Is that how we want to do it though? Okay, for key item in item raw data, data items. I guess it's just like not that bad. And then when you're appending, you would just change the event ID. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this item ID and put it in here. do this actually now let's try it on one of these numbers right and I have my D to name is that the function name that we created Hmm. All right, so let's see. We want to we want to look up thirty three forty here. Oh my God, work emails on a Sunday. 
So we have item ID is 3340, right? So we want to see the item name, right? We want to remember how to go back to D-Dragon. So what do we do? Um, what do we what do we want to do with the dragon? I mean, we can just import it that way, right? We can just put this line. First minute D game. No, 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 no. Fry in range zero to seven, if not for no. Yeah, but I don't think I want to do with that. I want to do full list of items bought, so we're gonna just take. I have my data name, and we're gonna take that. Maybe that'll work. Then we're going to try to get shopping cart with name. Copy this. Get shopping cart with name. And then items bought with name. Dict object is not callable. Yeah, the item ID to name didn't work. I think this will change things. I think it won't work. If we do this, items list is not defined. No, it is. Wait. What do you mean participant isn't defined? Participant ID is defined. Int is not subscriptable. This is so annoying, you piece of shit, honestly. This is so fucking annoying. I don't know, I, don't, I think this is wrong. Yeah, this is 100% wrong. Many participant ID items bought. Yeah, this is wrong. Items I item ID to name. This is wrong. Here. This has to be wrong. Maybe. She wants to play with my niece and my nephew. But I think someone would be allergic to dogs. I think that's why they're putting her upstairs. But anyways, wow, holy shit, I've been teaching for over two hours. What the fuck? No wait, over an hour. Over an hour? Over an hour. But I've been streaming for like two hours. My brain's fucking shot. I'm sorry. I had like three hours of sleep. Um. Yeah, no, it would just be event ID, right? Like, wouldn't it be? No, it'd be. Yeah, it would just be this. Right here. Yeah, right? This worked. It worked? It worked! Oh, I was right. I was right. I was... I was right. I was right. Okay. I'm sorry for, like, the messiest lesson in the world. But this is literally what you're gonna run through. Like this entire thing is literally what you're gonna run through when you build your script. Cause things are just gonna break all the fucking time and you're gonna be like, what's going on? Now we're gonna do this. We're gonna do the same thing we did with get summoners, right? We're gonna do game information. Item lists, lol. 
And then we're going to copy that, right? Game participant ID. And then bam. See? Cool. So I want to know how I can put this here. Here's my skill order one. Good skill order. All right. So before, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do this. We're gonna figure out how to put this in here. Skill order out append. And it would be skill order out replace. No, it would be skill order out replace, right? And then skill order. But you're replacing it. Like you literally just replaced it here. Let me do this. Print skill order. Let's do skill order equals get skill order. Where is it? We do that, right? This Query right here. No. Nope. What? What do you mean? List is no attribute replace. What do you mean it has no object attribute replace? We're not. Because here it's a string. If I did, if I did this, does it work? No. Replace in function. Actually, no, I'm not going to do that. All right. So I think that's really it. Like here. attention like the belly rope um so yeah like that's the one thing that, that I'm gonna try to figure out soon but basically you're gonna create these for everything right for everything in the timeline we have right so like let's see skill level right so like this whole timeline you have item ids you have word placements right like you want to find out word placements you can do that you can do all these different things and then build them into this list all right we build them into this data frame all right and then you download this data frame and all that and that is literally what you're going to be doing in order to create your automated script all right and wrappers make it a lot easier but when you're already editing the wrapper as much as I'm doing it, you might as well just create your own scripts. When you create your own script, you can like do so much more with it. Like, I don't know. Like, it's pretty crazy. Things you can do with this card drift. So like here, right? Let me show you. This is a lot of information, right? Really wonderful. But some things that are important are like right here you take this entire purchase order you're trimming it you you're ordering the items that you have 
you adding images, you're adding different syntaxes, you're adding definitions for pro names, rune IDs, item IDs, all these different things, right? But once you do that, you can create something like this, right? Like this is something that I created that's completely automated, right? And I think I can run it right now, actually. Yeah. So like if you go all the way to the bottom, automatically, this is literally automatic. Like this is what you can do. It'll load everything. Like I'm pretty sure it's like nuts. And you have all these item images, you have runes, spells, all these different things. And you can do so much more, right? And you can set filtering the ways you want, who's playing what, who's doing what, right? Like all of this is all handwritten, right? Like, look, look what I did. I created all of Maxwell's games in like a certain period of time and it's gonna go until today. Like all of this was built by me and like, it's, I don't know, it's fun, but uh, I'll share that script that I created, but um, that's pretty much it for today. We will have more workshops and lessons in the future, and I want to know what you want to learn. But, in addition to that, I'm thinking of doing, like, educational content that's not just coding, like learning how to cook, or learning how to do fun shit. I don't know. I want to stream more often, so. I don't know. It's, it's pretty cool, but I really enjoyed teaching this it was kind of hard for me to get used to but um we're definitely gonna be fine like i want to see a bunch of you apply to some of these jobs i want to see oh homework homework show me some automated work that you have created Literally, that's your homework. Tell me what you want to build and how I can help. Maybe. Oh, this little nugget. All right, I actually need to go because she needs to go outside and I want to walk her. And she can't really be around the kids because some of them might be afraid of dogs. So, yeah. I really enjoyed this. And I hope I can do it again. And I hope I did a good job. Because, like, I'm not really a teacher in any way. But, um, this was a great ride. And I'm going to stream more often. I'm going to share all the slides that I made. I'm going to post this up on YouTube. And I'm going to share that script. And... If you want, I'm thinking that we could crowdsource and create like a big script that we can all use or like, well, that you can all use. Cause like, I honestly don't think I'll be doing these things anymore, but, um, yeah, like it's, uh, it's lit guys. It's lit. <laughs> it's been a good ride and I hope you guys have a great Sunday and I hope to see you guys you know, do well. I want to see you guys do well. Yeah. If you guys 